Welcome back to MVM. I'm Kira, and I'm here with a Kickstarter preview for On Point, sponsored by Analog Game Studios. This game is the ballet board game. You're going along a dancer's journey, and you're going to be playing this at two to four players. It is a family weight game, so you can play this with just about anyone. But be careful, because it is going to be a race, and not easy to be the first to the stage. Let's take a look at the game. Here you'll see we've got a two-player setup laid out for the game. You've got two player boards. They are double-sided. It doesn't matter which side you play on. It's just your preference. One side is a tutu and one side is a tunic. You're gonna have five tokens off to the side. These are your position tokens and these are your special powers that ballerinas can use throughout the game. On the player board, you'll see areas where you can decorate your tutu or tunic. This is where you'll be placing gems that you'll collect which are worth points throughout the game. There's a special place for the tiara for the prima ballerina, but be aware only one person can be the prima ballerina, so you'll want to try and get there first. You'll also have places for dancers that you might pick up along the way. The uh, award for where you, when you get to the stage, whatever position that you're in, and some spaces for the different props that you can pick up throughout the game. You'll see here too, there are some additional tokens that look like the props, and that is because there's a little bit of a set collection element here. You can pick up these props, and if you get two of the same color, you'll also get this token to signify that, giving you an additional two points. Then you've got some gems out here, and we'll talk about how you can get those. And lastly, you've got your movement cards. These are going to be variable depending on the player count. You'll see because we've got a two player game set up, there are four cards. That means we're each gonna take two different movements each round, going back and forth one at a time. First player will begin and choose one of these movement cards. Let's talk about the movement cards just a little bit. There are a variety of movement cards in this game. One is going to be negative movement, which means you're moving backwards. You can only move backwards with this card. This particular card allows you to move in any direction backwards, but you can only move backwards. Here, we've got diagonal movement in any direction. The number up here is gonna indicate how many spaces you can move, and you have to move in the same direction the whole movement. So if you're going to move left diagonally forward, you have to take all three of those movement in that direction. Lastly, we have these orthogonal movement cards. Again, you have to make that whole movement whichever direction you go. This one is only one, so that makes it easy, but you can only go forward or backward. There are gonna be a variety of other ones that are just like these. Uh, as far as m optional movements, but it's gonna be forward instead of backward and so on. So there's a lot of different ones of those. It is important to note, of course, though, that once someone makes it to the grand stage, the only way to go is forward. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you starting with what it looks like being the first player. The first player is over here. The first player is gonna wanna move, is going to choose one of the four spots here at the bar. This is your training and practice area before you get to the rehearsal stage. There are a few props. These props are randomly laid out by the players of the game. They're split up evenly at the beginning of the game, and then each player gets to place them wherever they want. There are some restriction to how many can be on each board, six here, six here, for example, uh, and no more, but it is completely up to the players where they go, and there is a reason why that placement makes sense. You have to move directly onto each of these in order to collect them. So if say I'm sitting here and I'm the first player, I'm gonna probably wanna select this two diagonal movement. Oh wait, that doesn't get me there. It does move me in the direction I wanna go, but it doesn't quite get me to that spot. So if you're trying to collect these along the way, you're going to have to be very strategic about your movement. Can you move backwards into it later? Of course you can. But do you really want to be moving forward and backward? So doing your best in order to collect those. Now, that being said, I moved two spaces with this card. I'm going to flip this over. I do have these special player powers over here that I can use, all right? One of those player powers allows me to pick up a prop from the row that I'm in. So I could now pick this prop up and stick it on my player board if I so choose 
to use that particular ability. Now, I've used that ability. It slipped over. I can no longer use it throughout the game, but I do have a prop to get started. And we're going to go back and forth. So the next player, say, is going to move three spaces forward. One, two, three. And then it's back to me, and I'm going to get to choose to move three spaces, either directly forward or in diagonal direction. Well, for me, three directly forward allows me to pick up another token, and then I will just flip over that movement card, and now it's back to this player. I did allow this player to go ahead and get this movement by going one forward, uh, or getting that token by moving one forward. Now what happens? We've started to work through our practice, We've done all of our movement for the first round. The first player token is going to move to the next player. We're going to discard the four movement cards we used in the round and put out four new cards. We'll continue to do that throughout the game, and there's a few different things to pay attention to as you make your journey as the dancer. This particular area you'll see are point shoes. These are the ballet slippers that the ballerinas wear that allow them to be up right on their tippy toes. And so to get here, you have to be very specific and very tactical. You have to move exactly and land exactly on it. So I would need to use this two movement to move exactly two forward. Once I do land here, I get to collect one of the gems available to me. Now the gems are gonna be in very specific areas throughout the game. All right, so then we're gonna continue to move now. We're starting to find ourselves in rehearsal. There are other dancers to be wary of as we move throughout the game. We're going to want to avoid them as much as possible because they're worth negative points. If you happen to have to move into one of their spaces, you will have to collect them to your board. Now, there, are way, there is a way to get rid of them, but you want to not collect too many because you can only really get rid of one in the game. Now. Some other things to take note of, if say I were here and I had a two movement to the right, I can't take that movement because there's another ballerina in the way. You have to be able to take the full amount of the movement of the card you choose in order to choose that card, otherwise you cannot. Say you can't take any of the movement that's available, you just do not get to move for that turn. That's gonna continue back and forth and you're gonna have these different abilities such as doubling up your movement, changing the direction, you can even exchange a prop with another player as long as it doesn't break up a set. Or add yourself, and this is the really fun one, footwork for five, which allows you to move up to five spaces in any direction, allowing you to really get the theme of being a ballerina and twirl around other folks and uh, that are out on the board. And again, you're gonna continue to move all the way through. Once you get to the stage, you actually have to move around these curtains, so you can't just move through them. You actually have to be strategic and get your way through. And then again, make sure you don't hit any of these dancers. Now, I mentioned earlier that when you pick up a dancer, it's worth negative points. And there is a way to get rid of that, and that is to go to the pas de deux. The only way you can pick up one of the gems here is to have another dancer with you. Once you go there and you pick up that gem, You'll say goodbye to that dancer, thank you for your help, and you've eliminated that negative point. Now each of these gems are worth three points, so that's obviously a very good thing to have. Again, you'll want to have to land exactly on these spaces in order to acquire them. So in order to get the Prima Ballerina Tierra, you have to land there. You'll also acquire a gem, just like before. And then last but not least, you want to make it to the grand stage and claim your prize. You'll take your first player spot if you get there first. Each of these are going to be in descending point order as you gain them. Obviously, first place being worth more. We'll stick that on the board there. And throughout the game, you'll collect the set collection tokens as you need them. As, again, as you use your powers, you'll flip them over. And that, in a nutshell, is On Point, the ballet board game. All right, so that's On Point, the ballet board game from Analog Game Studios, and it's on Kickstarter now. If you really enjoy thematic games, if you enjoy dance, whether you were a dancer or you just enjoy watching dance, you will find enjoyment in this game. The strategy around it is very interesting. You have to be very careful about how you are navigating the board and picking up these different items along the way because at the end of the day, that's how you win. You need those tokens in order to score the points. 
And the better you are and the better dancer you are and the more you are on point, the more points you're going to score. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and we'll see you next time.